we'll classify the critical points of this function. In Calc 1, critical points were where your first derivative were equal to 0 or first derivative was uh, undefined. Calc 3, there's two first derivatives. There's the partial with respect to x and the partial with respect to y. They need to be equal to 0 simultaneously. Your partial with respect to x in this function is 12x squared minus 12xy. Your partial with respect to y in this function is negative 6x squared negative 6y plus 12. These have to be equal to 0 simultaneously. Let's take the first one. Let's factor out what they have in common. They have a 12 and they have an x. When we factor that out, we're left with an x minus y. This product should be equal to 0. So either x is equal to 0 or x is equal to y. Let's call this guy case 1. x equals 0. Let's call this guy case 2. x equals y. All right x equals 0, case 1. We take this information that we got from the x partial and we plug it into the y partial. They have to be equal to 0 simultaneously. If x is equal to 0, we end up with negative 6y plus 12 is equal to 0. Well, that just means 6y is equal to 12, which tells you y must be 2. This gives us the critical point, 6, 2. That's for case 1. Now let's move to case 2. In case 2, we have x is equal to y. Let's look at the ramifications of that. On the y partial. We'll have negative 6y squared minus 6y plus 12 equals 0. It looks like a quadratic. Let's take that negative 6 out of there. We'll have y squared plus y minus 2 is equal to 0. This factors nicely. y plus 2, y minus 1. And so either y is equal to negative 2 or y is equal to 1. All right, great. So this gives us two more critical points. Remember now, x is equal to y. So we'll have the point um, negative 2, negative 2. And we'll have the point 1, 1. We have three critical points. And now it's our job to classify them. The way you classify critical points is you have to take a look at the second partial. There's a second partial with respect to x, a second partial with respect to y, and a mixed partial. There's three different second partials. In Calc 1, it was about knowing the sign on the second derivative in Calc 3. It's about creating a formula with these second partials. There's three of them. Mixed partials are equal. If we go back, we can write out what uh, the x partial and y partial were. Is there a way just to lasso this? Copy. Come back over here and paste. Nice. Can we just move it? All right. With that particular x partial and that particular y partial, now we need second partials, double x. Start with x and take x again. You'll be left with 24x minus 12y. Double y. Start with y and take y again. You'll be left with negative 6. xy. It's the mixed partial. Start with x and take y. Or you could do it vice versa. They should be equal. You know you've done it right when they are equal. Uh, let's start with x. We'll have um, the y partial of the x partial is a negative 12x. 
we create a formula, give the letter capital D, which is built off of these second partials. We take our double X, we take our double Y and multiply them together and we subtract the mixed partial squared. This comes from a determinant of a matrix called the Hessian. And based on that determinant of that Hessian, we can tell whether we have a local min, local max, or a new critical point called a saddle point. And so let's go ahead and um, we have to evaluate it at each of the critical points. Let's go ahead and write the formula out before we plug in. We have 24x minus 12y, who's going to be multiplied by a negative 6. And they're going to take away a negative 12x, who is squared. It's our job to plug in the critical points. We had three of them. And so for critical point number one, we're going to have um, was 0, 2. x is 0, and y is equal to 2. And so with x being equal to 0, we end up with a 72y there, because this part zeroes out. And it's a 12 and 6 y. And then we subtract the uh, 0. So it ends up with a positive 72 times 2. We care just what the positive value is. So let's go with that. Uh, we care about the, the sign of it. We don't care about the actual value. Uh, at the point 1, 1. We get that D is going to be 12 times negative 6 minus 144. That is less than 0. And at the point negative 2, negative 2, we get that D is going to be 48 plus 24, whatever that is, that's positive. 48, negative 48 plus 24. That is a negative 24. And from that, we subtract 24 positive, who is squared. So um, yeah, that's definitely uh, something who is negative. When your capital D formula is negative, you have a saddle point. It's like a max and a min. If you look at it from one direction, it looks like a max. From another direction, it looks like a min. Like when you're on a saddle, the, the legs go around the side of the horse. That would be the legs culminating to a maximum. But then along the length of the horse, the saddle has another parabola looking shape. And there, that would be a minimum along the length of the horse. So yeah. It's called a saddle point because of that. And uh, if D is positive, then we can either have a local min or local max. What we do to decide is we look at the, um, we've got a couple options. Uh, the, the double X partial is going to do it for us. We could actually look at the double X and the double Y and add, add them together. But, but let's just go with the double X. That's what is what's taught in most standard textbooks. So if D is greater than zero, you go look at double X. If double X is greater than zero, that's like having a concave up function who is then gonna have a local min. If the double X is less than zero, that's like having a concave down function and that's going to end, lead to a local max. Okay, so that's the criteria. We know we have two saddles here. And now the question is, what is the point zero two, local min or local max? So we look at the double X value, who was 72? No, it was before multiplying by the negative six. Double X is here, and at 0, 2, that is negative. 
So double X is less than zero, leading us to a local maximum. All right, one local max and two saddles. Let's change the color here, make it stand out or highlight it or something. Local max for zero, two. And then both of these are saddles. Let's change the highlighter color. D is less than zero for both of these critical points here. So we have uh, one, one, and negative two, negative two are saddle points. All right, find and classify the critical points. All right, hopefully that was helpful. You gotta take your first partials, set them both equal to zero simultaneously to find the critical point. To classify, you go to your second partials and you create this formula based off of all of your second partials and that can help you decide what type of critical point you have. All right, hopefully that was helpful. Thank you very much.